Hello and welcome to the Little Woman podcast. Before entering the podcast, I wanted to let you all know that a Little Woman podcast now has merchandise available at society6.com slash littlewomanpodcast. There you will find stickers, posters, mugs and t-shirts to fulfill all your little woman needs. Come and check it out. Link is also in the description. And now to the podcast. Hello everybody. My name is Nina and welcome to the Little Woman Podcast. Today's comment shout out goes to Rainbow Milk 1996 who left this insightful comment. Joe also doesn't really like writing for the weekly volcano. She's only doing it for the money. And it doesn't even pay well. She's probably lying to herself and saying, everything is fine. I am giving Beth the luxuries I want to give her and she's happy. I am happy. But when Fritz gives his opinions on sensationalism, she realizes what she is doing and stops. Considering the movies don't really talk about what Joe is actually writing about. I can't remember off the top of my head, but murder is mentioned. So it can't exactly be all pretty stuff. It is easy to think that Fritz is a generous snob. He is not. People were less desensitized in the 1860s and 70s than in 2022. Fritz is less a generous snob and more not wanting people, specifically children, scared at a formative age. End quote. When the book show is in New York, she actually has two editors. The first editor wants her to write sensationalism, stories that show herself calls trash, and the second editor only wants her to write moralistic tales, which is not something that Jo is that into either, and it is Friedrich who helps her to find her own way of writing. Why the filmmakers don't show this conflict that Jo has with her editors, and kind of portray Friedrich in a bad light when in the book it is the opposite? That is a very good question. My today's guest is really an expert on this field. We have talked a lot in this podcast how Louisa May Alcott loved German culture and German writers. And now for the first time I have a guest from Germany. Her name is Sinem. And Sinem is here today to talk to us about Louisa May Alcott's adoration to Goethe and Friedrich Schiller. And how we can see the effects of these two writers in Friedrich Baer's character and in general in Louisa May Alcott's novels. And season one of the Little Woman podcast has also appeared as an audiobook. And you can find the link from the description. This is Small Umbrella in the Rain, Little Woman podcast, Friedrich Schiller and Goethe, Algot's Literal Heroes with Sinem. I really love Little Women and I also really love the chapters that involve Friedrich and Joe. And since I also am born and was born in Germany, yeah, I really love the way Friedrich talks in the novels. And yes, I also love this chapter we're going to analyze. Yes, I love it too. It's one of my favorites. And I also think it's very romantic for everybody who says that Joe and Friedrich aren't romantic. I recommend reading that chapter again. I think the problem is is that it's not really in the adaptations, but it's so good, it should be there. Yes, definitely. Um, I think mostly in the movies or adaptations I've watched, it mostly is like Friedrich goes to visit Joe, kind of. And then that's the end. It's like only like one day. Whereas in a novel, it continues, like their partnership continues even at the home, not only in New York, but it also is where Joe lives. They have this extreme and powerful bond and it only grows as the more he stays there. And even when Joe leaves New York, they have continued writing letters. And I think you can only see that in some of the TV versions, because in the movies you just see them arguing and then 
they stop communicating, which is really weird because that doesn't happen in the book at all. Some of the TV shows, they do show that they continue writing these letters. And when Friedrich comes to Concord, he's actually there for two weeks or something, courting her. And I also think it is very important that uh, Louise and my uncle included the fact that even when they were apart, they like continued writing letters to each other. And the chapter beforehand, Joe reads a letter from Friedrich and he's like, oh, if only he would come. And it's like a wish come true to her. Exactly. It's this secret wish that she has, that he would return back her life. Yes, and I also think it's very important because Joe literally craves for company in this um, in this chapter. But the thing is, like, she has her mother with her and also her father, but she even says that she wants to try all, kind of law, all kinds of law that exist. Like, she isn't really satisfied any longer with only the love of her mother, of her parents, or of her sisters. The previous chapter called All Alone, there's really this long monologue that she has about how lonely she is and how she longs to find love. And I think she says that her heart is so elastic and that she would like to try what romantic love feels like. And this is such a misunderstood part about Leo Woman. We have discussed about this before, that people really do not seem to read the book at all when they talk about Joe wanting to be independent or whatever. Yes, and I, to be honest, I think like even if you a person, a woman, a human has a partner, it doesn't make them not independent. Like, I mean, relationships can enrich people, and that is the same with your know, species. He enriches her, but she still has her independent side, and they live together in a very beautiful harmony. Yes, and if Joe would have married Laurie, that's when she would have lost her independence completely. Because Laurie's demand at that time especially because he hadn't matured were like you have to take care of me you are a little mother to me and since that's just what you did you will take care of me 24 hours a day and when I'm angry you will you will do whatever I, I, I want you to etc I also think in this chapter in surprises she completely forgets to compare British to Lori and I think it's also like a funny thing because she has idealized Laurie very much, but in the end she stayed true to herself and she fell in love with Friedrich because he is the right man for her. Laurie at that time was not a man. He himself states it in that chapter. Also in this chapter there is a apology from Laurie, which I find very feminist thing for Luisa and uncle to write, but like we have discussed in this podcast and you and I have discussed this uh, in our private discussions that this is one of those things that is not in the adaptations either because Laurie is so incredibly idealized. I think the only version where Laurie ap apologizes to Joe is the BBC series from 1970s and most people have not even heard from it. So <laughs> I am very glad that I get to discuss about the chapter surprises with you today because I think this is completely overlooked chapter. Yeah, I agree. It really is uh, overlooked. And I also think this chapter is very important also for the growth of Laurie because like we have seen him evolving and growing and improving, but this is kind of the climax because he not only acknowledges his mistakes to himself and the others chapters, but he also acknowledges it to Joe when he says, uh, I was making a mistake at that time. And I'm sorry because I think it is, like you said, first of all, very feminist to acknowledge it, that he forced her to be something she was not. But it is also very important because in, in many adaptations, you don't really see his growth. And it's actually very sad. Like, in some, there is kind of an apology, I guess, but it doesn't really feel right because, I mean, in the... Then again, in the movies, he kind of never did anything wrong. Exactly. Like the proposal scene, it is often romanticized. You don't really see how uncomfortable Joe feels that in the book, the way he's treating her, that's a problem. 
So his apology in the book makes a lot of sense because Laurie himself realized that it wasn't a right thing to do. That is true, and I also think it's important that Louisa Malcolm did have Laurie apologize. It is also an ideal way of showing that men can change and better, and that they have to acknowledge it. Like, I think he, like, any other author wouldn't have, like, just glossed over it, but I think it is very important that Louisa May Alcott didn't gloss over it, and I think it's also important that Louisa May Alcott did have Joe uncomfortable with Laurie being so possessive of her, because, I mean, who wouldn't feel uncomfortable when their friend would force them to something they didn't want? Yes. It's kind of interesting because in later chapter, uh, I think it's under the umbrella, Frederick says that he thinks he knows Jo very well, and that's why he does not force himself to her. Then we have Laurie, who has known Jo since he was 15, and then he tries to force himself on Jo. And you would think that it would be the opposite. Yes, that, that is very much true. And I say, I really love how Friedrich was introduced in New York and I love how great his character also is in this chapter because when he comes to I think Orchard House to uh, visit Joe and he sees that she's company he at first doesn't want to go inside because she's busy and all that stuff but then she, he stays because Joe looks at him in such a way and because he because she just throws him into the house, kind of like she shows him into the house, and how he, like, he doesn't change for Joe, like, he doesn't uh, pretend he is somebody else when he talks to Joe's parents, he is still himself, and I also love that in this chapter, he looks at Laurie a great deal, and he also looks at Joe a great deal, and the fact that Joe is, like, she has to keep her eyes focused because she is afraid that her eyes will look constantly at Friedrich is also very funny. There's something about him that speaks right to her soul. It reminds me of that part in New York when he's speaking about religion and then I think in that chapter he really becomes Joe's hero. So there's something similar that happens here. Definitely. Like I said, I really love Friedrich as a character. And I also love the fact that Louisa Malka didn't just, like, gloss over the fact that Friedrich was visiting her. It was a very important chapter, and it also let the, the audience know Friedrich even better, because he was there for Joe, but he also, like, he wasn't only nice to Joe, he was nice to everybody around her, because that is who he is. You are pretty... Well educated when it comes to Louisa May Alcott. Would you like to tell a little bit how you got introduced to the old woman and her writings? It happened like this. I was kind of craving for reading something in English. And I was like, why not try some classic out? And then I, it was the first time I kind of discovered it. But there are kind of a few bad reviews. So I wasn't really sure and I couldn't, like, couldn't get a reading extract of it. So I thought to myself, let's wait a bit. But then, when I got to the shop to look for some English book, there again it was, and it was like the whole version of it, like the, I think, 777 pages. And I re read a bit into it, and I was like, okay, this is the novel I really want to read. So I started reading this one, and I uh, fell in love with her writing. And then I like, read her other novels as well, and the one that also had a real big impact on me, besides that the win was also work, because it is such an incredible novel, about little women. The funny thing with it is, the biggest is the Meg, is really how I always imagine my own aunt to be. I have two of them. The older one especially reminded me of her. And I have to say, I also love the fact that Louisa May Alcott included her own morals, especially in her books. And it is also very important because I think that really thorough is in every novel of her. And then there are people who claim that she didn't love them. But the fact is like, 
okay, if she only included Henry David Thoreau kind of character and, for example, Little Women, then maybe we could say, okay, she didn't love him, but it is clear that she was very much in love with him or had a crush on him because that kind of character is in all of her novels. Meg, uh, David, I wouldn't say Tom in in an old-fashioned girl is completely like him, but when he grow, matures, he also kind of becomes that kind of archetype. Yeah. And I think it's important. Adam in Moods is also based on Henry David Thoreau. Um, yeah, and then there's the German man in the Queen of Hearts. He's based on Henry David Thoreau. Uh, so the list goes on and on. At some point, maybe in this podcast, I will go through all of these Henry David Thoreau archetypes. Yes, you are correct. He appears in literal disguises in pretty much every single Louisa May Alcott novel or short story. Yes, and also in A Fatal Long Love Chase, I think that's what it's called, it's quite a thriller and I think that one is also very important because in that one Henry David Thoreau is kind of his archetype character is I think Father Ignatius I don't know I can't remember his name but I think that was his name and he also kind of really reminded me of Friedrich but I have to say I still love Friedrich more because I think for me out of all his out of all the Henry David Thoreau archetypes, I think Friedrich is the one who speaks mostly to my heart, probably because he's also, like, because he can talk German. <laughs> and I always, soon when he uh, does include some German words in his English phrases, in his English sentences, because I'm like, I can understand everything he says, and it is so cute. Yes. And it's adorable because in Little Woman, he he's still trying to study English and he speaks with a broken English. And then he throws these German words here and there. Then in Little Man, the narrator says that he has improved his English a lot, but he still uses some some of his favorite German phrases like shut and mine, mine son. And yeah. <laughs> I think it is also very important for him to actually use this kind of, like, he has a very, uh, very open vocabulary, I'd say. And I think it is also very important to note that he didn't come to New York for himself. The reason why he came there was to provide for his nephews. And I think it also shows his very caring nature. So it just came now to my mind. It's also kind of a parallel to Louisa May Alcott, when she like wants to provide for her own nephews, and I think that was the reason why she even started writing Little Man. Like she wa- knew she wanted to write another book to the series, but she was like, "Okay, I have to provide for my nephews because their father just died." And then she wrote Little Man, and that is just so sweet, and it's also a kind, a wonderful parallel to how Friedrich came to New York to provide for his nephews and when he seeks work so he can provide a home for Joe. That is true. I hadn't thought about that before. That is a parallel between Louisa May Alcott and Friedrich's character. Her brother-in-law, John Pratt, had died before she started to write Little Man. I also have to say, whenever I meet Little Man, I always cry at the passage when John Brook dies. And, but again, it is such a great revelation on how caring Beatrice is, because he is very important in the novel Little Men as well. And I just love him even more for that, that he's so caring and so sweet. And it's kind of funny, I also wrote that to you, it's kind of, he is like, normally, in fiction, these kind of characters, like the ones who are very caring, who are very open about their feelings, who work for loved ones, mostly are actually women in these kind of fictions. And I also think it's very important that Friedrich is a male because he kind of unifies men and women in his character. Yes, he has very empathic nature that is often considered to be more feminine. Yes, that's true. But I think for me, like I'm not in the age right now, but if the 
there was somebody I'd like to marry or somebody I would fall in love with, that would probably be somebody who's empathetic, who loves me, respects me. It's of such importance for a person to be empathetic because then the world can evolve with people like that. And that was such a big deal for Louisa May Alcott. She found it very important that people did feel sympathy to others, especially those in bad situations, because she came from such a poor background herself. Definitely, it's very important that, unlike many fans who actually wanted Joe and Murray to be together, I think it is perfect that she made Joe and Fifi an official couple, because like in part one, there are the Hummels, they are German, and besides Beth, I think Joe is the one who cares for them the most. Like they, like I said, they're German, they are poor, and that is the same how Friedrich is. Like, he's German, he's poor, and I think it is also very important that she showed that interracial relationships are important, and that they are like just like marriages between couples that are the same race. I think it's still the day you can get some backlash if you are dating someone who is not from the same culture than you are, but in those times it was even more scandalous. And yeah. then we have Amy and Laurie, and Laurie is half Italian, and Italians were not treated with respect in the 19th century America. I think the Italian side only shows when he has one of his moods, like when he's angry, or when he's happy, or something like that. Only then do we see that he is Italian, like that's not to be a stereotype, but I think it's that people who are from that kind of country, they are very temperamental. There are some scenes in Little Woman where Laurie mentions how he wants to connect more with his Italian roots, and that I think that's why he's also very artistic. Um, he's interested in music and art and things like that. And to him, Italy sort of represents those things. And then I think it has a parallel to Joe, because for Joe, Germany and Goethe and German romanticism, it really represents sort of high literature, high poetry, uh, theater pieces, and all these great things that come from Germany. So not only is Louis May Alcott a Germanophile, but Joe is also a Germanophile. And I also have to say, I love it, that both Joe and Louisa May Alcott are very interested in German culture and German language and costumes. I know it it came much later, but when you think of World War II, especially, like, for me, it is also very important that a novel at that time portrayed the German culture, German language, etc. as a very good and unique thing. Because mostly when I now look at movies or something like that, it is mostly propagandic that all Germans are bad. And I think that is a very sad thing because, I mean, everybody has a good and a bad side inside him or herself. And I think it should be balanced. And I really love that, unlike most people of her time, though Isabel Alcott didn't treat German people with disrespect for but with very much respect, especially because she was a transcendentalist, and transcendentalism is very much inspired by German philosophy that was also stated by Friedrich in the 1994 adaptation. And I also think it's very important to acknowledge the fact that, unlike most people of the time, who is a May Alcott did love Germany on German people because diversity is very important and respect is very important. Yes, I think you are actually the person who might be able to tell about this. Louis May Alcott loved Goethe, and Goethe is really a big part of German culture in general. How do you see Goethe in Germany? What's uh, his right. presence? We have read a few poems of his. My, my father has, I think, Faust, in, Tur in Turkish, but still Faust, has uh, a copy of it. And I have to say, just newly in the German class, we have, uh, we discussed a poem of Goethe's when he looked at Schiller's skull, because these two were very close. 
when he looked at Schiller's skull. That's when he wrote the poem. And I have to say, I think Goethe is very, is I think very important because he portrays such a positive aspect of German culture. I th also have to say, I think it's sad that the teenagers of this time, which I used to be, but not longer right now, <laughs> I think it's also very sad. Many people in my classes, they dislike poems in general, so they also kind of dislike Goethe's poems, and then I am there, I adore his poems, because first of all, his language is, is very wonderful for me, and I also have to say, I have a neck a fable for interesting people. So I guess I'll someday even read all of Goethe's novels or when I find a good biography, I'll also plan on reading one because I also think it is very important to know about people who shaped our culture. What you said about Schiller made me wonder if Schiller was the one who Friedrich was named after in Little Woman or maybe it was Friedrich Delmott for K. But I have a feeling it might have been Schiller. Yeah, me too. Especially because I think that Goethe and Schiller, they are very close. Like I said, he wrote a poem after seeing his skull. I think because they were very good friends. And Louise Malkut was such, not a fanatic, but she really, really loved Goethe. And that was very clear. I mean, even in work, David, he has novels of Schiller as well as of Goethe. So I think it is more likely that Friedrich is named after Schiller. Yes, that's of course my own theory. But like I said, I also think that besides Goethe, I think Schiller also may have had an impact on Luisa because the robbers, I think it's called in Schiller's first novel, there's a, a feminine character called Ama Amelia, Amalia, I don't know how to pronounce in English, but she is uh, very sweet, very generous. She is like, kind of like Beth, but without the fact that Beth fell in love with somebody, she is very kind and giving and generous, and she only wants the best for everyone. So I also had some parallels between Schiller's work and Luisa's work. That's really interesting. What was the name of that book? It's called The Robbers. Like I said, it's his first novel. So I haven't read anything else from him yet. But maybe in another novel of this, we also see how much he's improved. Because he wrote that one when he was 17. I suppose he was not allowed to write at that time. I forgot why, but he like wasn't allowed. And I think it's funny that he made a story that is close to Louisa Malcott's Blood and Thunder stories, and the main character, Call, is very much an archetype of the of this movement that was around in uh, Germany at that time. I was just saying that in Rose in Blue, Mac reads Goethe, but I realized he doesn't read Goethe, he actually reads Henry David Thoreau. <laughs> in Little Woman, there's a moment in part one where John translates a poem from Schiller to Meg. Yes, that is very cute. And it's also very funny because John also knows German. And it's also funny, if you think about it, it kind of is like the whole March family is very interested in German culture. Like maybe you don't see much with the others as much as you see with Joe. But I think Meg was also very eager to hear the translation of it. And John was also like, yeah, I'll help you translate it, or I can teach you with German. I think he said that. I'm not sure, but I think he said that. And it is also very sweet. Yes, I have forgotten about that. I love it. It kind of goes along with my theory that Louisa May Alcott planned Joe's marriage maybe years before she wrote Little Woman, because it does feel like a natural thing to do to introduce a German character to this family that is really obsessed about everything that comes from Germany. I have to say, the first thing that comes to my mind when I hear like, people say Friedrich was only shovel because Louisa was forced to marry Joe off is, well, but why, if she was forced, why in the world would Louisa my Alcott write so many things about Joe's and March's love for Germany? I think we can all agree that this really comes from that the quote that she wrote in her journals about reuniting with her loved one in the afterlife. So Little Woman is a wish fulfillment. I think it's also kind of 
racist of them to state that that he was shoveled into the novel because I mean they know Friedrich is German and it's all most always he's like they don't dislike him especially because he is German like even people today are like man she should have stayed single or with Laurie which to be honest I can't can't stand both of it I could never stand the thought that Joe might have ended with Laurie or alone especially after reading the chapters all alone and surprise surprises because in these two chapters you can see how lonely joe is and then there are people who say she only married friedrich because friedrich was invented because Louisa my uncle was forced to marry him i think you are correct about the racism because i have read so many Louisa my uncle studies studies that are like joe should have married glory or joe should have been alone there usually is a racist undertone when they start to speak about Friedrich's character and then they do not include these parts in Little Woman where Joe clearly loves everything that comes from Germany or Louisa May Alcott's adoration to Germany. 